to the class that we're going to go over today and the class is recorded and um, the participants are all on mute but um, if you have a question you can drop it in the chat and um, we'll answer it during class if we can and um, this class is uh, it's recorded so there will be a live replay available it'll be on michaels.com slash classes um, by tomorrow even as early as tonight I've seen them pop up pretty quickly um, and let's see what else uh, today is uh, a peyote stitch embellished cup and it is a really fun one it's beginner friendly we're going to go over the first parts of how to make it three times we'll start the project three times and then we'll show you the embellishment I'll show you putting on the class this is the project how it looks um, it starts with an eight column even count paley with size eight john bead check glass seed beads and then it has an embellished side which can be made with either size 10 seed beads or you can also use 11s if you have those handy both will work um, and then we're going to finish it with a toggle clasp and um, talk a little bit about other finishes you can do for them other styles variations and a little bit about colors so um, if you guys are ready i'm going to switch my camera so we can get started okay just letting that go into focus really quick okay and so what i have here on the mat is a finished sample of the project made with the color um, mix royal topaz and uh, it's a really gorgeous gorgeous mix there are a lot of very gorgeous mixes um, in the shop now with you know so much to choose from and one thing that um, I've been doing is adding an embellishment to the side with either 10s or 11s so these are gold metallic or it's also called galvanized if you're getting it in the size 10 it's called galvanized gold and so that's what I made this with and I used um, these toggle clasps from Michaels they're available in this oxidized copper. They also come in a silver. It's really pretty. The thread that I'm using today is Wildfire 0.006. And I'm using size 10 hard beading needles. And to cut the thread, I'm using the precision scissors from Recollections. And so um, as we work, I'm going to be using different colors so you can check out all the mixes that are available. One of the mixes that um, you'll see a sample of today is Deep Sea. This one has cobalt and um, like a silver lined teal, a matte finished frosted blue, all mixed in there. Really gorgeous. And I did a stripe with it to make it kind of just pop. Um, and then, of course, the class sample, the one that you guys would have seen in the PDF. Um, there is a class PDF. And uh, we'll be dropping that in the chat for anyone who, um, if you didn't get an email, it will be in the chat room here. All right, and so this was called Retro Blue Mix. And I lined the side of this one with emerald, silver lined emerald. Okay, so I just. Um, and it is posted in the chat room. We're going to drop a copy of it in the chat. All right, so um, starting with about 40 inches of wildfire thread. And cutting with precision scissors. And I wanted to show you guys another trick for threading the needle is to flatten. You can flatten the end of the wildfire and it will actually thread a lot easier. If you have chain nose pliers handy, you can use those to flatten the end of the thread as well. It does an even, even better job, but fingernails are great too. Just kind of flatten it down. Go. Make it even flatter there. One trick with um, 
threading needles, if you're having trouble like I am here, is that one side of the needle, because of the way they're made, they're punched. One side has an easier time than the other. If you think about like if you used a hole puncher, the direction the metal has gone is a little different on one side versus the other side. So I'm going to switch to this side and see if that's the good side. And if all else fails, switch needles. But I'm going to give it one more go. There we go. Okay, and so wildfire is pretty thick. And so one of the things that is good about that is it's not going to come off of your needle while you're working. But I really give it a pull to get it through there. Okay. All right, so I'm going to start with the color that was used in the class sample, which is the Retro Blue Mix. I love this mix. It it actually has a pop of green in it. You can see the little, I mean, these colors, you guys, these colors, they're just, they stand out so pretty. Um, and this is even count peyote stitch. I'm going to start with eight beads and I'm going to string them in any order because this is a random pattern. So I've got eight on the needle. And bring that down to the end. Leave a good working length at the end of your tail here for adding the clasp later. So I usually try to leave 12 to 15 inches or so. It's not a, a super critical measurement, but just enough that, you know, you could weave in a toggle. Okay, so eight beads on the string. Pick up one new seed bead. Skip a bead and go through just that next bead on the chain there, or on the, on the uh, thread there. And pull. And then there's a trick that I like to do. If you pull the working thread and the tail thread, pull them apart. And uh, watch those guys snap into place. In peyote stitch, you want the to the bead you're adding to stack directly above the bead below it. And there, I'm trying to get so you guys can see. There we go. And so I'm going to repeat that step again. I'm going to pick up a bead, skip a bead, and go through the next bead. Pull the working thread and the tail thread apart. And I'm going to help this one sit. There we go. So I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm going to give it a tighten pull there. And we're working with round seed beads. For, for those of you that were in our class last week when we were using the cylinder, you notice when they stack up, they stack up very, very tightly on top of each other. With round seed beads, there's going to be a little wave. And with each row that you do, it shifts the wave left and right. And so it actually evens out and you get, you still get a straight stitch at the end, but I'll show you that. Um, but right now you're going to see it kind of listing to the side. So I just picked up a new bead. I'm going to skip a bead, go through the next bead. And then I'm pulling again, pulling apart the working thread and the tail thread. So it'll snap into place there. And one more time, pick up a bead, skip a bead, and going through the next one. And pulling those threads apart. Okay, so what you're seeing here is rows one, two, and three completed. The first two rows were the eight seed beads we added first. The third row is the one we just did. 
And I'm going to put a fourth row on here before I start over so you can see what, what I mean about that sort of listing to the side. So you can see he's kind of, it's bending just a little bit. But when I put on this next row, and I'm pulling pretty tight um, to get them to set, see it's already starting to correct. So just don't be discouraged if when you're building those first two and three rows, if they're doing that, it does fix itself after you add the next four, five, and six rows. By row six, you won't have, you'll have a little whisper of a, of a bend, but it won't be noticeable. Okay, so there's, that was row four added. And that's even count peyote stitch, eight columns. I'm gonna set this one aside. I'm gonna start another one. And so this is a, a good segue to talk about pattern. In the PDF that um, is being put into the chat room, there is a pattern for uh, intermediate beaters if you guys wanna give that a try. And it's a rainbow pattern that adds a wave of color. And it looks like this. But you don't have to do that kind of pattern. You could do any pattern you want or just random like we're doing here. But if you are doing a pattern, you read the word chart for rows one and two, and then go ahead and add each row after that by either using the word chart or the graph pictorial, whichever style works for you best. So um, switching back to step one here, starting with wildfire thread, 40 inches. Gonna cut 40 inches here with precision scissors. Do really well with a wildfire. And flattening the thread. And hoping it threads easier this time. Okay, yeah, see I must have had a funny needle there. So mine's going in great. Okay. I'm folding over at about four inches. This has worked on a single strand. So next step, pick up eight beads in any order. Slide those down. Leave about a 12 to 15 inch tail that you'll use to weave your clasp on later. And you're gonna pick up a new bead, skip a bead, and go through the next one. And pull tight, pull the working thread apart from the tail thread. And then same thing again, pick up a new bead, skip a bead, and go through the next one. And pull the threads apart. I'm pulling really tight. Pick up a new bead, skip a bead. Skipping a bead, going through the next one. There's rows one, two, and three. I'm gonna flatten that a little bit. Okay, and so to start row four, you pick up a new bead, and you'll notice you have an up bead now. See, there's up beads and down beads. You wanna turn and go through the next up bead. And pick up another bead, go through the next up bead. Pick up another, go through the next one. And last one. So in each row, you'll be adding four beads. There's row four. And as I was mentioning earlier, you see he just kind of, it's not straight. It's, these aren't cylinder beads, these are round, so they're an organic feeling. And as you add rows, 
that all evens out. You see, ends up being perfectly, perfectly straight, just over an aggregate. But in those first four rows, you'll really see that whisper. So that's row, I'm gonna throw row five on there so you guys can see just the next step. There's one. That's the upbeat. I'm going through the upbeat. Row five. Next upbeat. There you go. Rows one through five. So let's do that one more time. Starting with the wildfire and uh, cutting 40 inches. Using precision scissors, flatten that end here. Thread the needle. Pull. And so I see it's, it's a thick thread. It sticks to the needle pretty good, which is nice. You don't lose your needle. About four inches or so, fold it over. And pick up eight seed beads in any order. I'm going to get a green one on there. Do I have eight? Good. Got eight. Slide that down. Leave um, about 15 inches or so, or more if you'd like, for attaching your clasp, and then pick up a new bead, skip a bead, go through the next one. And then pull the working thread and the tail thread apart. And they'll sit side by side. I'm gonna do that again, pick up a bead, skip this one, go through the next one. and then pulling the threads apart. And pick up a new bead, skip a bead, go through the next. And pull them really tight when I pull these threads apart. Just trying to make sure that they they really lock into place. So I'm adding my last one, skipping this bead and going through the last bead on the strand that we added at the first step. Pull tight. And then I'm gonna flatten this out a little bit. Try to straighten it out just a little, help it. Okay. And don't worry about that curve. You can get rid of that by adding the next row. So this is the starting of row four. So picking up a bead, going through that up bead. You can see in, in Peyote Stitch, it's neat. You've got a little spot for each bead you're going to add. Picking up another new bead, go through the next one. Pick up another one, through the next one. One more. Row four. So does anyone have any questions about that, those steps? Hi, Danielle. It's Carmi from John Bead. I'm just Hi. checking in with you. Um, I wanted to let you know, thank you very much for showing how to start at uh, three times. Um, the question was um, what size needle they could use if they don't have tens. Can they use a 12? Um, yes, but it'll be a little harder to get the 0.6 into a size 12 needle. It, it's possible. Um, Good to know. If you have 11s, that would be a better choice than a 10. Um, but the 12s will work. Um, it's just, I would get some chain those pliers and flatten it a lot. And then when you, when you get it through the needle, you'll need to take those chain those pliers on the other side and use them to pull. 
Thank you. Once it, yeah, once it's threaded, you got it. It should be fine. We do have a couple people having difficulty threading their needles, so. I'm with you. You guys saw right out the gate. I couldn't do it. I, I eventually got there in the end, but I, um, you know what? I switched needles and it was fine on the next one. So if you're having that trouble, just pull another one out of the pack and see if it's better. First try, you know, flipping it over because one side versus the other side will be easier to thread. So I just try flipping it. And if that doesn't work, try again. Okay, so I'm setting aside these samples really quick. And so let's, uh, let's talk about length really quick. So for length, the clasp on this design adds an inch. So keep doing, you know, the steps that we just went over. Keep adding rows until you get a length that's, you know, within, say, three quarters of an inch to an inch less than you'd like it to be. Keeping in mind with a toggle clasp that some crossover is beneficial because when you're putting it on, you're going to want to tighten it a lot to get it to toggle through. And then it'll hang looser once, once you've got it clasped. You need to leave room to clasp it. So keeping that in mind was your final dimension of how you'd like it to fit. Um, but then just, just use a tape measure, just keep going. There's variations, so there isn't a certain set number of rows. I mean, there is, there is a, an average, but I don't really go by that. I just, I just measure it with a tape measure. And so that's what I would suggest everyone do. Um, you're gonna need to add thread. So this is the next place I wanna show you guys. Um, when you're working with this stitch, you'll probably add thread four times, depending on the length you're going for. So I'm gonna add thread right now, just to show you how easy it is to do that. So I cut a new working length, flattening the end here, grab a new needle, and thread. Hopefully this one is friendly. Let's see. All right. I literally willed that into working. There we go. Pull it down about four inches or so. More is okay. Especially when you're starting with that really long strand. You can pull, fold down even more just so it's easier to pull through. And here's where I left off on this piece. So I have my short thread here. I left it in place so that I can see where I left off because I'm going to weave my new thread to meet it and to exit from the same spot. So coming down from, I'm coming down from this direction because this is, um, it's the same story where we want to change direction three times in order to lock thread in place. So here's just entering the work through one bead, leaving a little tail here. It doesn't have to be much. We're going to trim that. Go through the next bead. I'm going through a third bead. And now I'm going to turn. I'm going to turn through this one. You could go through this one or that one, whichever one is above or below. And it doesn't really matter which, which you weave into. So now when I pull, you see how it's getting a little tighter. But the tail still moves. I can still, I can still move it, so I need to keep going. So I'm going to come up, I'm exiting this bead, I'm going to come up through this bead. Okay, I'm going to keep going here. So that was direction change number two. Already it's probably pretty tight, but the tail won't move. Yeah, see it's not moving. But I need to get to here. So I'm just going to go and I'm turning direction again, going up to the next one. Now I'm going to go up through the last bead where I left off. Tighten that up a little bit. And there we go. Now I can trim. I can trim this thing, this extra tail here. And to do that, it's that you know, snip under tension where you push down with the scissors, pull up with the thread, and just turn. Roll the beads a little bit and it will disappear. Okay, so now I have my old working thread here. 
my new working thread here, I'm gonna ignore this for just a little bit longer and build maybe a few more rows. And then I'm gonna weave this thread into it. So let me get some retro blue mix out here. Sorry, this is deep sea. This is, I've switched from retro blue to deep sea. Sorry about that. Yeah, this is the gorgeous deep sea blue mix. And I started making a pattern with it. You don't have to make a pattern, but if you wanted to, and you're using a mix, I would suggest getting two tubes so that you're sure you have enough of every color that's in that tube to finish your pattern. That's what I'm doing here. For this one, I added two of one color. And all you're doing here is you're just stacking the new color on top of the old. So I'm, I'm not working from a pattern here. I just, I was just playing around with, with the colors and I wanted to see them in a stripe. And so I'm just stacking them. I'm gonna build one more row this direction. Then I'm gonna weave this tail into it. And then I'm gonna show you guys the embellishment. So that's what I'm doing here. And then you can get a quick look at building a straight pattern. Oops. Okay, there's that. There's this one. I don't know what each of these colors is called. They're part of the deep sea blue mix, but I would say this is like an iris navy, and it is gorgeous. It's really beautiful. Okay, so I've got that. I've added two rows. I'm going to thread a needle very quickly onto my tail here. So this is, again, this is the tail of the old working thread that got too short. Okay, so I'm going to turn and go through that bead. This is the new bead that we added in the row before last. Go down through this one. I'm just going to get this out of the way a little bit. There we go. Okay. Down through the next one. So I've gone down through three beads from where I turned. I'm going to turn and go back this way. And it's not essential which beads you go through. With weaving in, you can just do whatever, whatever direction works for you. I'm going to go down through this new bead, this new bead row, and reinforce it. Peyote stitch is neat because you can add thread really easily and it's very, very well hidden. Okay, one more. And then I'm going to trim it. Okay. So again, putting some weight on the scissors and pushing down and pulling up with a thread. There you go. If you have a burner, you can use that too. But scissors work great. Okay, so from here, let's say this is the length I want it to be, and it's time to add the embellishment on the side. You can add uh, an embellishment with either 10 or 11s. I'm using size 10s today because I'm just trying to use the big speeds I can, so you can see them as, as easy as possible. 11s are great though, so whatever you've got, go for it. Um, so here's how it works. I, I'm exiting from the last row I built. I'm gonna pick up six of these size 10 seed beads. I'm going to go through not the next bead, the one after that. So my tail is exiting here. Sorry, my working thread is exiting here. I'm going to skip this bead and go through the third one. 
So can everybody see that? Going through the third bead there. And pull. And it makes a little arc. And that's the first little set of embellishment. So these, each of these sits on top of each other. To get them to do that wave, that make, and it makes it really thick on the side. It makes for a really nice bracelet. To get it to do that, we need to go back one. So you remember we skipped a bead? I'm gonna go back through that bead that we skipped and come up. So like that. And making sure that my thread is in front of the embellished arc that we just made. The thread will always be in front of it as we go through the whole thing. The thread always needs to be in front. So picking up six more. And now I'm going to skip the bead and go down to the next one. So what you'll see here is this was my first arc. And I'm exiting from the center, skipping the bead that the arc finished in that, and then going through there. If that makes, if that makes sense. Um, when you pull tight, that new arc sits right in front of the former one. And so this next step is the same step we just did. We're going to go back through the bead behind it. It's just going to be a little hard to see because there's already an arc in that bead. We're going to exit from the same spot as the end of the first arc. So turning here, going through here, and trying not to go through the, the beads in the first arc. So here's what I did. I came down through here, turned and went back to that one in front of all of those beads, keeping the needle in front of them. The original beads are eight of them. Yes, they are. And these new beads are size 10. Okay, so there's those first two embellishments are on there, and I'm in position to add the third. So I'm going to pick up six more. I'm going to skip that one and come down to the next one. So each of these arcs covers three it covers three of the size eights. So you exit one, skip one, go down one. Here's the side view so far. There's one, two, and three. And now I'm going to go back through this one, the one right behind the one we just went down. I'm hoping that makes sense to everybody. Awesome. Okay. And so I'm going to keep going for two or three more steps. And then if you guys want to see starting it again, I'll come over to the other side and start it with the other side. So six more beads here. Exiting from the center there of the last, making sure the thread came up in front of all the beadwork. I'm sorry, I hit the camera there. Okay. And so skipping this one going through the next one. And come down, tighten, and go up through the one right behind it, staying in front of all the beads. Pull. Add one more. There's six beads, size 10 on the needle. And go down through Skipping one and going down to the next. Okay. And that's Danielle. it. Yeah. Danielle, it's just Carmi checking in again. So I, I, most people are loving the embellishment on the side because it's really tight, but they could make it so it was spaced further apart, right? Yeah. I mean, and so I just saw someone pop up saying, can I admit the embellishment? Totally. You don't have to do the embellishment. You could end this bracelet as it is, and it's great. You can, there's no rules to how you can do this. Any way you, you'd like for this to look, you can use, use four seed beads. Um, do you guys want to see what it might look like if you spaced them out? Yes, please. Okay, I'm going to switch to the other side of this piece. 
And so the trick with spacing them out is, is coming back through and adding the one before it. We have to, you can do anything you want as long as it's consistent. And I'm threading a stubborn needle. Sorry, guys, I'm not sticking here. There we go. Get it. Okay. And so this is the other side of that bracelet. I'm just exiting. This is the working thread I had, or actually the tail thread that I had. But it's going to be, um, so the first arcs we did were we added six, and we arced over and went through that. So we skipped one and went through the next one. So if I understood you guys right, you want to see what would happen if you made like skip four or five. Yeah, let's see. Um, there's six. I'm going to try adding eight. And instead of going through the third, I'm going to go through the fourth. Baby steps. We'll see. It could be crazy and try five. But yeah, so, so from here, just kind of playing with it in my mind, I would want to fill these gaps. So maybe you, you don't have to. You could maybe do six and then go back to the middle. That would work. But um, what if, what if I go back to here and add eight? So you can see, you know what, I'm, I am literally just making this stuff up. You guys could come up with so much, so much on your, on your own, just playing with beads, just put them on the mat, dump them out, and see what happens. Did I add eight there or six? I think I'm stubborn and I added six. Two, three, four, five, six. I did. I want to add eight. Let's see. So Danielle, a couple people mm -hmm. love the gaps. So they maybe they would, they would lo love it as a scalloped edge. Okay. Oh, you mean not overlapping them at all? Not overlapping. Now I understand. Oh, okay. For real, that's gorgeous. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm with you. I'm going to try something. Hang on. We have time. I think we can do this. Now I'm inspired, so see what you guys did. <laughs> All right. Go this way. Okay, I'm going to take some of these off. I'm going to do four. Two, three, four. What a great idea. Mm, five. Um, no, maybe six. Let's see. And then just come up to the next one. You can yes. Fill that. Okay. And let's add six. And this is arbitrary. You guys got any any amount you want. Um, two, three, four, six. Okay. Skipping one, going down one. And significantly, this would speed it up a lot because <laughs> if you're adding it the other way that I was doing, it takes a long time. It looks awesome, but it takes a while. Um, coming up through the next one here. So yeah, this would be a fast, easy way to get a really gorgeous bracelet. Danielle, there's agreement. Both, both ways are pretty. Awesome. This one, um, I'm a crazy lady. I would make different sizes. I would put, or, oh gosh, like drops or something, even little drops or like say, put a drop in between each one or a four millimeter bead or just anything. Anything would be really pretty. So yeah, you guys get your hands on these beads and then just go to town and please share it. Um, the hashtag for sharing is make it with Michaels. And I would just really love to see more ideas that you guys have because they're awesome ideas. Look at that. I might finish the sample this way and post it later because that, that is just beautiful. Okay, so we're at 139. I think it's clasp time. I'm going to switch to the clasp. And, and you guys have inspired me to make sure I say there's more than one way to do all of this stuff. This is just the way that I came up with. Um, but there's so many different possibilities. There's absolutely no reason you can't try this uh, with a different count or um, the different clasp or the different placement of the clasp. Whatever you like, try it. See if it works. And then share it. Okay, so this is an exact copy of the one that we were using in the handout. And actually, I think I'm going to walk through the handout just for a minute because this is easier to see on the pictures. Um, in here, to add the clasp on one side with the round part of the toggle, I just made a little rainbow arc of beads, three size 10 beads 
the jump ring or toggle part and then three to three size tens and then just weaving back through it. For the toggle end, a couple things you can do. One is um, you'll want it to, to stick out further because it needs to be able to clasp. And so what that looks like here is that. And that's so that when you go to wear it and put it on, you'll have room to maneuver. See this part, the beaded part actually goes inside the toggle when you're putting it on. So you need that maneuverability. So I'll show, I'm gonna show both sides, finishing both sides. So starting with, this is just the side where I finished my last embellishment. As you can see the embellishment came down. I went in through this bead and pulled tight. And now I'm just gonna pick up three size 10 seed beads. And then I need to grab my toggle clasp. And the toggle clasps I'm using, um, the handout has them highlighted in there, but they have a built-in jump ring. So you won't see me adding jump rings today. I'm just going to use the built-in jump rings that are on them, which is really handy. I, I like this toggle a lot. I use it on a lot of the samples. Okay, so it looks like that. And there's the built-in, kind of built-in jump ring on it. And go through it with those size tens. Connect it there. Pick up three more size tens. And now I'm going to go down through the next upbeat, or sorry, the last upbeat of my row. So upbeat one, two, and three. I'm going to go through. I'm exiting from number one actually, so that's two, three, and four. Go down through here. Tight. There it is. And I'll show that one more time. I'm just going to come back out. So I added three tens. I'm exiting from the last bead, the last size eight bead. And added three tens, the class with three tens. And going down through the last up bead in the row. And pull tight. And so I need to weave in so that I can get to the position to go back through that. I'm going to go back through it three times. And so to weave back in for the first one, my thread's exiting in the wrong direction. So I'm gonna need to turn around. And in order to do that, I'm just gonna go down through this next size eight seed bead. And I'm gonna come up through the size eight seed bead in the row just prior to that. So through this one. All I'm doing is just literally just turning around. Now I'm going to go through, intuitively you think you'd want to go this way, but remember we need to turn. So I'm going to go through, through that bead. And this is all in the handout. This thread pathway is in the handout. Turn and go this way. And now I'm right where I need to be. Turn and go through that up bead all my tens. So there's my first three tens. Go through there. They go through the clasp, through those three tens on the other side. And now back down through that size eight. And so the same turn again, with the same turn we did on this side in reverse. So going through here, right? And through the one, it's back one from there. Turn through here. One more. And then turn through that last eight. I'm being careful here not to catch my embellishment. So it, it really wants to hook into that. And now go through all those rows again. So the three tens, the clasp, and the other three tens on the other side. And so that was my third pass. You could do a fourth if you want. I feel like that's really strong. 
and I think it's okay to weave in at that point. To weave in, um, it's kind of the same idea. I'm gonna go through this next bead here. And being careful not to go through the embellishment. Turn. And so I think in the handout, I do show a way that you can kind of, as you're weaving in, if you want, you can use your embellishment on the side. That's totally optional. Weaving in, go through any beads you'd like. Just make sure you change direction three times and you've got it. So for me, that was direction change number two. This is also a good opportunity to tighten up your work. If you had loose beads at the beginning, you can use this opportunity to weave in and tighten them up. Okay, and I'm going to trim that thread. Pushing down with the scissors and pulling up. And so there, that one side is on. It's really tight. And I'm going to show you the toggle side now. The bar side of the toggle. So let me get this needle free. Oh, the fun of threading needles. We do that a lot in this class. Here we go. Okay, so this one exiting again from the last bead in the row. And so with this one, we're going to do something a little different. We need to weave until we're at the approximate center. I'm going to weave to exit here. And with even count peyote, there is not a true center. So just choose one side. It's close enough. Okay. You guys, I have sparkly beads everywhere on this mat. Okay, so what am I showing here? Exiting from that last one. There we go. I'm turning. And so you see what I did there? I just did the same weave that we did before to get to this position. I want to exit so that I can put the two strands here. Okay, so now I'm going to pick up two size tens. And then I'm going to pick up one size eight, any color you like. And then three size tens. And I'm going to go through the bar of the toggle. Three more size tens and now go back through the size eight bead that we added and pull and pick up two more tens and now we exited here in between these I want to go down over here I want to go down through that bead I'm just I hooked over my bar here Okay, so there it is right there. And now we're just going to reinforce that connection. Same as before, and the thread paths are shown really clearly in the handout, but um, I'm going to go through them here with you guys. But it is really similar to weaving in. You're just kind of getting your thread back into the position you need it to be in to exit where you need it to be exiting from. And one cool thing about this particular closure and the ending of peyote stitch in general is because you have this gap between the beads, you can actually get the thread through 
both of these through the tens and it will make the tens look like they're sitting attached to the top of that center bead. I'm going to show you that right now. So this one, I just went through this bead in this direction to finish it. Now I'm going to weave up and exit from that one. I hope that makes sense. I'm gonna, it's in the handout too, but I'm going to show you guys what that looks like. I'm going to go through the next bead. Okay. Then I'm going to go up through one more. Turn. Go through this one. Okay. And so remember before we went into the green bead? Let me get this out right here. We went into the green bead with the, the two tens. I'm going to go back through the tens exiting from this bead. And it's going to lock it right down into the center. There we go. Okay. Did everyone see how that moved? I know it's hard to see, and I apologize, guys, but the um, go, going through this one, weaving around, and exiting from this one, and then going up to the tens, it pulled it right into that gap, the gap that you have in between the seed beads and peyote stitch, pulled them right into there. And so now I'm going to go through the eight, go around all of the beads and the clasp here. Oops. I lost my needle. It actually came off. How's that possible? There we go. Get through here. All the way down. And that's pretty much it. So same thing on the other side. Going through these tens. And so coming down through these tens, I have a choice here. I can go through the ones they're exiting, but I want to make them line up with the other side. So I'm going to go through this bead, which is the one in between the two. Tighten that. And guess where I am now? Right where I need to be to go through it again. And so that's how, that's how you add it. I would go through this again, come down the other side weave it into the work. I'm just going to go ahead and try to, it, it will start to get tight on the third pass, but that's good. You don't want to have so much wiggle room that there's um, wear points on the thread. So tight is good. And keep going through here. Okay. And I came up through this one, so I'm going to go down through this one. And then go ahead and head into the work. Either direction is fine. I'm going to go through this one. This bead has had less passes, easier to get through. And now I'm just weaving in. That's all I'm doing. I'm going to go through here. I might go over one of the little arcs of the embellishment just to kind of get my thread back here more since I've done a lot of weaving in this section. So one of my tricks when I'm weaving in and I've I've gotten to that last part where it's starting to get tight. Let's get out of the way, go into a new, some new real estate over here. Um, coming down through this side of the embellishment. Okay, and now all I would do now is just, just weave around, change direction three times and trim. Okay, but I'm, we're getting to, we've got about six minutes and I want to show you guys something really cool. So I'm going to stop here unless quick room for questions if anyone has any. You're good to go, Danielle. Okay, so next week, just kind of the like grand finale of peyote. We're going to be doing bugle peyote, four drop peyote. Don't be scared. It's really easy. I made this earlier. I was really excited about it. It uses, I don't know if you guys have been into the shop to see the new lineup of bugle beads, but they're gorgeous. They're amazing. Um, the colors on them, they just have some serious pop. So I'm going to show you guys a little selection that I picked. These are my favorites. Um, and come up a little bit. Just gorgeous colors. So grab, grab a tube or two of these bugles. Um, they go a long way. This entire bracelet only used half of a tube. And it's a seven inch bracelet. 
and then grab yourself some size tens. Now, um, this is one of the classes where using 11s, you may have a little more trouble because the tens I discovered when I was playing with these bugles, but the tens are perfect in height and width if you stack four to match a bugle bead. So you do wanna go ahead and just try to get some tens for this project. If you don't have tens, don't sweat it. We'll try it, let's see, we'll, you know, we'll play around and see how it works. But um, I did use tens for, for this one. And yeah, and so that's, that's next week. I hope you guys will join us for that one. I'm gonna switch to camera. Hi, it's Carmi again. I just want to let everybody know they received two emails from Michaels today. The first email, they accidentally sent the class PDF for the project you're actually showing. Oh, so, bonus. <laughs> so everyone's bonus, getting a guys. bonus advanced well, look at, at how to make this bracelet. So they'll have that. And the second email will be the project PDF for the class you just taught. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Yeah, so actually, I actually think that's, as I was saying, that's a bonus because then you get a head start for, for next week. So this was today's, the Fiori Cup bracelet. And next week's is the um, four drop peyote with bugles. And it's very cool. The thing about this um, that I feel like is really great is it, it looks like it takes forever and it looks complicated. It's easy and it's fast because you're only adding three beads per row. You're just treating those four like one bead. Anyway, we'll go over that next week. I'm just excited. Okay, so that's all I got. Unless there's more questions. No? Okay, well, in that case, thank you so much for joining us and making great cups. Please share your creations on um, hashtag Megan with Michaels and I'll be looking to see what everyone's made. I'm excited. And thank you for the scallop idea. <laughs> Bye.